I am joined now by the man formerly known as Jack Swagger, Jake Hager. It, is, it looks beautiful there. Yeah, it's not too bad. Got uh, a little bit of rain lately, so it's you can go outside without just drenching yourself in your own sweat. Now I know that you have it. You've uh, made a very cognizant effort to not really overexpose yourself in the months after leaving WWE. Uh, what what have you learned since then working an independent circuit that really you you hadn't worked before? This this seems like kind of uncharted territory for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, very uncharted territory. Um, I got uh, so much help. And just a great response from the locker rooms that I've uh, been a part of and the promotions that I've got to work for. It's It's been unbelievable. Uh, really surprised by it. Um, not that I wasn't expecting, you know, something awful. It was just, it was so helpful. And like everyone like bent over backward for anything and any questions I would have. So uh, I know, I knew going into it that it was uncharted territory, like you said, and I really made a focus of like, uh, trying to learn every day. And, uh, I, I see the biggest thing is, uh, even, um, in the indie scene, you still need that, that fan momentum. That's still the natural, the thing that's really important to create, whether it's your charisma, your character, how you wrestle, uh, you need to get people talking about you. And it's a little bit bigger of a fan base uh, that you have to contact and reach. So uh, it's been exciting and uh, been learning and hopefully getting better. One of the things I've noticed is like the array of different styles and personalities and experiences that you have faced since leaving WWE. I mean, I'm oh, talking man. like from Doug Williams to like the UK hooligans to Donovan Dijak, who just got signed by WWE, to yeah. guys like Billy Gunn and Tommy Dreamer, yeah. to like Cody Hall. Cody Hall, uh, Mike Elgin, and Warbeard Hansen. Both, yeah. Both on, it was great. A lot of great matches. Very lucky. And uh, it's really, really been cool to, uh, to like see. Uh, the different styles and what everyone brings and the stuff that they do inside the ring to get their uh, moments and whatnot. Cause it's really on this side. I feel like it's all about creating moments in the matches. So what goes in uh, with you coming from WWE and you spending your entire career there to working the independent scene, when somebody were to contact you, you give them like your flat fee and say, there you go. That, that's what it is. They try to negotiate with you. How, how does that work out for you? Yeah, some try to negotiate, and then, um, you know, some go with uh, the past relationship that we have or recommended through a friend, so makes it uh, a little bit easier. Um, but normally, I, uh, I, I'm i very willing to uh, do a array of things, and uh, I, I just use uh, my price as a jumping off point, and we go from there. Um, and it... You know, it's still – that's another thing you have to learn about, it, like how to accurately price yourself, um, you know, what your value is. And then, of course, you got to make sure that you do the proper promotion and uh, bring in the numbers for that price. How has travel been for you in comparison? I know that Cody Rhodes has said, man, the travel's been even worse for me since I left WWE. And I know that you've wrestled in UK, uh, Australia – You've been all over the place. Yeah, I was going to say it's it's um, a little bit rougher, I think, just because when you do the multiple shows, a lot of times, like Cody and I are doing, um, it, it's a flight every day. And when it's a flight every day, that changes everything. That's that's a whole different ball game, And so that gets a little rough. Um, and then if, if you go international uh, and you fly in the morning of the show, uh, you get a couple hours of sleep and you just wake up and you're jet lagged. So I've, it, it's been nice to like go in the night before now and uh, go with that because the travel has been rough. But, you know, it's part of the it's part of uh, the perks of the job as well. So you got to, you know, realize what you're doing and enjoy it. Does it affect your travel when you flip on the TV and you see Ben Roethlisberger throw five interceptions? Does that hurt you? Does it affect you? 
I think, that, I, I think that hurts everybody. I mean, I can't find one person that doesn't like Ben Roethlisberger besides my not wife. Not one. Not, not one, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it really affects a lot of people in Cincinnati there, too, you know. Oh, man. <sighs> well, I mean, next topic. If you had one independent match <laughs> that you've had this year that, like, you would you would point at and say – Hey guys, I know that maybe you have a preconceived notion of me for better or for worse in WWE. Check this out. What would that be? Um, it's a good question. Um, there's been like you know we just went over the people that I've wrestled, um, and they've all have had different styles, and so I think uh, a lot of the a lot of them you can look at and you'll find little pieces where this is new and this is evolving. And then you'll see uh, a lot of the, the, the same hits that got me to the dance uh, and a lot of the matches as well. Um, it, it, like I said, it's, it's a constant learning curve and it really depends a lot on the crowd that we're in front of. So um, we're still, we're still trying to find that character that you don't know Jack character and then what makes him different. The getting you to the dance thing is always something that interested me because you had a bit of a different path than a lot of people. You were recruited by WWE. Yes. How how was that process, and what were your feelings on that as it happened? I know that some amateur wrestlers, like 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 a Kurt Angle, he he really had no interest in it. So what what yeah. were your feelings when they they approached you? I think um, like if you were an amateur wrestler in, in my generation. Uh, a lot of amateur wrestlers look at pro wrestling with a certain stigma. At least we did when we were kids. And, you know, a lot of that has definitely changed now. Uh, combat sports is more popular than ever. Pro wrestling is more popular than ever now. And so a lot of the stigmas are removed that were previously associated with it. Um, I was very excited for it because I knew – uh, one, it was going to get me out of Oklahoma ASAP. And so <laughs> I, I wanted that, but, um, two, I, I understood like how big the company was and I, I knew enough about it, uh, where I was a fan in junior high. Uh, and so I kind of understood a little bit about it. At least I thought anyways, until I started. Um, so I was very excited and it was a very big opportunity. Now, as you mentioned, combat sports has never been more popular, and that was really ramping up around the time that you made that transition. I know it was right after the Ultimate Fighter. It became an avenue, and today, even more so, you see like uh, Ed Ruth uh, with Bellator. You see a lot of the Aaron Pico got signed, and they really push these guys heavily. When you left WWE, that was one of the big rumors, is that maybe it's an MMA transition. And I know that you said uh, in a recent interview that would be kind of a risk, have MMA companies reached out to you? Yeah, yeah. And uh, as of now, uh, nothing is confirmed. Um, but I, I am definitely training uh, full on as if I were uh, assigned to one of the companies. Uh, I, I'm taking it very seriously because it is something very serious. And just kind of been keeping it close to the vest until there's something to announce. So what you're telling me is Bellator has made you an offer. What? What? <laughs> if Bellator hasn't pitched the idea of Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger in an MMA fight, I don't even know what they're doing with their business model. <laughs> like, well, it's, it's too well, easy. I, well, that's a good question. Do you think two – well, Alberto has already had the MMA background. but He's got a lot of experience. Right. Do you think two uh, – two, pro wrestlers crossing over to the MMA world, do you think that would be a draw or would you rather see them go up against an MMA, an MMA guy? People watched Kimbo Slice versus Dada 5000. One of those guys technically died in the cage and he's still alive today. I think people will watch anything. Yeah, well, I didn't. mean, we, oh, yeah, exactly. Kimbo had that momentum. He had the, the name. He had that X factor about him. You know, you'd want to tune in to see that. I don't know. I think two pro wrestlers going in there, it'd be better if they fought uh, real fighters or I'm not or sure. like, true MMA guys. 
So are, do you follow MMA or is it just something that you, you're considering maybe no, making I, that transition to? I, I follow it as much as I can with two kids and uh, something that I want to transition into. So as I mentioned, uh, the recruiting process, like who contacts you? Who sa And what kind of pitch do they make to you? Are they saying, well, you know, you will have to go to this developmental territory, which I would imagine – going from Oklahoma to what well, was it deep South or was it FCW? I, I was fortunate enough to go to all three. So I started in deep South in July of 06, uh, moved to OBW J January of 07 and then moved to FCW July of 07. So, and by a year and a half span, I hit all three and got all different great coaches. And one was strictly practice. OBW was all shows. And then FCW was a nice combination of both with uh, unbelievable uh, coaching staff. Um, the, the pitch, you know, you know, you, it was your typical pitch, you know, two big boob women in a hotel room for me. Uh, you know, I had to pull the string to see what they were promoting. I'm kidding. It sounds like um, the University of Louisville basketball pitch. <laughs> uh, I think Patino was there somewhere. Right? Yeah. He's always, he's always around, right? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that what happened last year didn't even get them kicked out of there, but we Man, won't talk about that. I'm a University of Kentucky fan. I used to love Rick Pitino, not so much anymore, but uh, yeah. yeah. It's a slippery slope, but everybody makes mistakes too, Sean. You know? Yeah, uh, repeatedly, apparently. Wow. Wow. I mean, that's. <laughs> It's a it's a pretty nasty situation, like, and that's that's another thing that you probably you had to worry about a little bit in college, like amateurism and stuff. Like I've I've known amateur soccer players who couldn't appear on like the local frozen yogurt shop posters because <laughs> because of amateurism rules. Is that something you had to tiptoe around, and was it like difficult in any regard? I never had to deal with it because I never uh, tried out international during my uh, collegiate uh, career. Um, so once I graduated, uh, I, you know, I couldn't I couldn't go back. <laughs> they were kicking yes. me out. So no, I didn't have to deal with it. It 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 is rough though, like how we still treat our Olympians. Uh, you know. Some of them work so many jobs just because they're surviving on sponsorships and, you know, low salaries. And, and then when they come home and they win a gold medal, they get taxed on the gold medal heavily. You know, what the yeah. – what? That's odd. Yeah. That's odd. Especially when you look at other countries and how they treat their Olympians. Yeah. But – so tell me about this, the, the you don't know Jack character and the, the evolution of this from Jack Swagger in WWE. Well, we, we, we kind of started it, like, with one promo uh, at the end of the WWE run. And uh, it, it was just kind of a, a cool thing to put on a social media handle afterwards for the innuendo. But, it, uh, you know, it's going to be a roller coaster after I go to all these countries and different promotions and different styles and really try to uh, adapt and focus on – uh, being a better pro wrestler. And so, like, you don't know Jack is coming, and it's, you know, it's going to be a lot to expect, at least from my end. Uh, you know, right now I don't know Jack, but it's, uh, it's going to be something uh, that I, I look forward to uh, coming up with, and I'm excited about it. I know you've d uh, discussed uh, the potential of joining Impact Wrestling, said that you want to work kind of everywhere. Uh, are you ever open, like, down the line if the right situation presents itself and making a WWE return? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's kind of weird to think about that now because it seems like this all just started. Uh, but, you know, you got you to gotta pay the bills. So, But right now it's uh, really a focus on uh, – wrestling international and uh domestically here and uh really want to go to japan very soon and uh start start wrestling over there and seeing what all the fuss is about so what was the reaction 
among other wrestlers when you kind of let it known that you were you were heading out was was there a farewell or did you just kind of go uh you know my close friends definitely like called me and messaged me and spoke to some of them and definitely heeded their advice on, on, on some things with it. Um, I was out for about a month with a, a medical injury. So I was at home anyways, when it, the contract negotiations uh, really picked back up. And so I, I didn't get to see a, a hardly anyone face to face. So there was, wasn't a farewell or a, a gold watch, but uh <laughs> Some some very a lot of love, definitely for sure, from a, a lot of the guys up there. Who do you tell that to? Do you contact like Vince McMahon directly and say, "Hey, I think it'd be best if I moved on." Um, I mean that that, that would have been one route to go. Um, they were we were in the middle of contract negotiations, and they were keeping me sheltered from events or hunter during it so um it kind of you know when you reach a stalemate you just go one way or the other and once i went through this the the going through them i was very angry but after going through them it was it was clear it was like i need to change i needed i need to move on and go do something else and uh see where that takes me and we're seeing more of that today than, than ever before. Like I put out a tweet this week that was like, I can't remember a two year period in the last, really since the, since WCW was around that more people have left of their own volition or just opted to not resign. We've seen Neville recently, Austin Aries. Uh, we've seen tons of Cody and Cody's found great success. What what do you think that is? Is it the overall health? I mean, when when Neville left, I'm sitting here thinking, man, that UK scene's red hot right now. Uh, the, you got New Japan, you've got a ton of places to work in America. Uh, what made you make that leap, considering that you hadn't really tested those waters before? You know, it was a, a couple of things. Like I said, I needed the change, uh, but you also see guys like Drew McIntyre. Um, guys like uh, Cody, um, they left and had definitely proved that there's life after the company, which is always nice to see because even though you're, you're, you're like, yeah, there's life after the company. When you're in the role and to walk away from that job, you definitely would like some reassurance with it. So seeing the success they had off of uh, hard work and good matches and the age of wrestling that we are in right now where it's more popular, more acceptable. And then social media is just filled with wrestling fans. So it's really easy. Uh, it's not really easy. It's easier to get your name out there and get your work out there without having a major platform. Something I've wondered, especially over the last year and a half in 2013, you had that, uh, the real Americans gimmick, how do you think that plays out last year and this year? Uh, if it's that, <laughs> considering the political landscape we're in. It would have been huge. It would have been a storyline that would have written itself every week. We could have just mimicked what had happened, and it would have, would have been great. Um, man, uh, it, it's funny to see how many people, how many politicians had with the people in their political yeah. slogans and whatnot. And uh, it's like, no, that's not yours. Do you think they would have went with it? Because they, they've went a few places with the Jinder Mahal storyline that I didn't think they would go. Well, uh, when Trump first announced, I just had a feeling that, like, oh, man, we're going we're gonna to elect him. And I pitched, <laughs> I pitched an idea to Vince, you know, about we the people and going on with Trump supporters and stuff like that. And uh, he he just said, "Stay away from him." And that was the last. Really? That was the last I heard about it. So man, so he was, you know, he's pretty, you know, he's he's in good with Donald Trump. Obviously, Linda's Linda's working for him now, so. And uh, Donald has been appeared uh, countless times in WWE. Did that surprise you that he was just like not touching that with a ten foot pole? It, it did kind of because that was part of my pitch. I was like, you know, I, I, I was like, how would you like to have the president on, you know, on live on air here? Yeah. 
or how would you like to brag to him that, you know, you got him elected into the Oval Office because of our storyline? <laughs> yeah, that would have been really good. Yeah, me, neither neither pitch worked on him, though, so uh, maybe they weren't that good. <laughs> I've heard so many good pitches, like, from former writers, former talent. One of my favorite that I heard was when Justin Gabriel told me that he, he pitched an idea that the, the Adam Rose's bunny should be this hardcore, like, chair swinging drunk and then they find him passed out backstage and they take off the head and it's Vince McMahon <laughs> who is who is just trying to go out and, and beat people up as a bunny the entire time like and when I spoke to Chris the Joseph of Lucha Underground he would tell me like if he pitched 100 ideas 95 of them would get shot down just right as soon as it happens did that happen a lot with you or did did they kind of give you uh, a fair amount of creative input? Uh, I think that happens with a lot of the guys up there, um, you know, and it's it's uh, their wrestling company, so they get to make those decisions uh, about it. Um, you know, anything where you put your heart and your, you're definitely your body on the line, of course you would like more creative input on it because – no matter what Meryl Streep says, uh, this is an art form. She's not the only artist. Um, and so, of course, you want to have creative input on that art. But it's, you know, kind of one of the things. Uh, you're supposed to dance when you're supposed to dance. <laughs> yeah. So you asked for your release right before WrestleMania. Was there any thought like, I'll write it out through Mania, get that check? Then go, or were you just like, I'm done. I'm ready to go. Um, yeah, I wasn't really thinking. You know, it, it would have been my 10th Mania, too, which is, you know, they were always something. They were always very special. Um, uh, I just, I, I, needed, I needed to make a change, and I needed to make that change uh, then. So <clears throat> there, there was no waiting. It, it, when I asked for my release, I meant it, you know. When we talk, we'll talk about making changes. Uh, there was a WrestleMania, uh, probably one of, one of the highlights of your, your WWE <laughs> run, winning money in the bank, and then two days later, you're world champion. Like, something like that comes about. How, quick, how far ahead do you know each individual thing is happening? Is it like kind of like you show up the day of and – they say it or do they tell you this is the plan yeah uh i think today with most storylines um they have like some of it planned out a certain ways but not too far and then with most storylines uh it's kind of like a day-to-day -day thing like they maybe have an idea of where to go with it or some of the guys are working on some ideas on which way to go with it uh but it's all like how they're feeling that day. I feel like when they talk about it, um, and that's how it was for me. Uh, won it on Sunday, and then teased it Monday, and then uh, Monday night after Raw, I got the call like, "Hey, come to Vegas. We're gonna need you at SmackDown." And so, like, I kind of had the idea just because it was the Money in the Bank briefcase. Uh, something was gonna happen. Um, then, so I got a little heads up for, just from it being kind of obvious, but other than that, it, uh, I was in the dark until a couple hours before the show. Now, as I was doing my due diligence before this, I noticed LFRlife.com. Yeah. Explain that to me. Let's fucking rage. Cole, can we say that on here? Yeah, of course we can. We don't have to deal with it. <laughs> we don't have to deal with censors. <laughs> Let's fucking rage. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's a couple things. We we got kind of it from a, a favorite movie of ours, Grandma's Boy, uh, my wife and I. Love that movie. Yeah, it's a good one. And uh, when we were dating three months, uh, we got, I don't know if you could see it, LFR tattoos on our wrists after three yeah. months. And so, you know, did the big couple faux pas that you shouldn't do. Uh, and, you know, luckily she is still here beside me, uh, beautiful than ever. So LFR has kind of been, you know, like our motto and always something that we would say. And like, 
if you can come up with your own clothing line, you get to name it what you want. I think that sounds pretty cool to yeah. me. Um, so yeah. if it blows up, you all can sell robot legs like the guy wanted on Grandma's Boy. See, you know, being me, I am a douchebag. <laughs> he was phenomenal. Oh, what a great movie! It was fantastic. Yeah. Also, on your Twitter, it lists you as a chili dog enthusiast and a chocolate milk activist. So I'm going to need your favorite of each kind. Where Where is your go to chili dog, and what is your go to chocolate milk? Uh, the go to chocolate milk is uh, easy, true moo. It's the creamiest. Yep. It's uh, you just can't beat it. Um, growing up in Oklahoma, I thought the best brand was Highland, um, which they're they're good. But uh, True True Moo came on strong in the last couple of years, which I'm very excited to be talking about. <laughs> and uh, I'm always looking for that good chili dog. Um, oof. I can make a mean one myself, a little sauteed onions and garlic in there, but we won't mm -hmm. talk about that. Um, you know, you know, it's funny. Burger Twenty One has a pretty good uh, chili dog. Um, other than that, I'd say Chicky and Pete's in Philly. Uh, they got a pretty good one with the lobster fries. Well, anything else you got going on uh, that you want to let the people know about? Well, it's it's really exciting. Uh, this side of it, one of the silver linings. You know, we we talked about LFRLife.com, and that's our yeah. clothing line, and we finally had time to really put, our, you know, our heart into that. And uh, as well as my wife is wrestling with me now uh, at most of the events, certain ones uh, that we, uh, we, we set up. And it, it's really cool because she's definitely a new dimension to Jack Swagger. And, you know, she might end up stealing the show from me. So we'll watch out. But uh, it's been so much fun getting to travel and, and work with her. And she's going to be a lot of, uh, she's going to be at a lot of the shows that I will be wrestling at. So. Follow her at Catalina Swagger. Twitter That's got to help being able to travel with your wife. It, man, it, it's something that it, like you don't really understand how much you appreciate it until you have it because it is so much travel and everything just gets washed into one uh, flight or one car ride. And so having her there, it, it, it's been it's been like beyond great. <laughs> and plus, now I don't have anyone to tell me what to do because she's there. Yeah. So. I don't want to, you know. Well, maybe, maybe sometimes she tells you what to do. Well, I, that's what I was trying to say. I stumbled <laughs> on, my, on my tongue. <laughs> I was trying to say I don't have to worry about what I need to do because she's there. She'll tell me. 